vector versus scalar. Uh, Yuchin, what is a vector? Magnitude and direction, a scalar, baby. Scalar um, has magnitude only. You'd be surprised how many things it just comes down to the difference between a vector and a scalar. Uh, a popular one for that is, for example, momentum class. Is it a vector or a scalar? Vector. Energy, vector or scalar? Scalar. Okay. The fact that momentum is a vector is something that often gets overlooked for multiple choice problems. People make a lot of mistakes on that. There are three UAM equations. What does UAM stand for, May? Uniformly, Uniformly accelerated motion. Class, there are how many UAM variables? Five. How many UAM equations? Four. How many do you, UAM variables do you need to know in order to figure out the other? And then you have? One I don't know. There are usually more than one. <laughs> okay. So please be aware that there are three UAM equations on your equation sheet. There is one of the UAM equations that for some reason is not on your UAM equation sheet. You're more than welcome to have that one memorized. Ah, speaking of, <clears throat> today we're going to be reviewing equations. Up until this point, you've had a, the equation sheet on every test. When it comes to the final exam, which portion of the final exam will you not have the equation sheet for, Mavic? Um, probably multiple choice. The multiple choice. So please be aware, in six sevenths of a fortnight, you need to have all of these equations memorized. Please remember that. Uh, we have the equation for acceleration. Mr. P. Instantaneous acceleration, please. The derivative of velocity as a function of time. Remember that you can rearrange this to get that the change in velocity is equal to the integral of the acceleration with respect to time from time initial to time final. Remember, with every derivative, you can rearrange it to get an integral. Uh, let's see, what on a graph does derivative represent, Mike? Uh, derivative is the, slope. the slope of the line, Loki, the integral. Uh, Remember, it's the area under, where under is in quotes, where it's the area between the line and the x-axis. One other little thing I asked you to remember, Tim. Uh, no, it's always the area between the curve and the x-axis. What's the other little thing, Catherine? Um, remember, the area below the x-axis is negative. Uh, let's see, we also have the equation for velocity. Gary, what's the equation for velocity? Yeah, instantaneous, please. Uh, dx over dt. Dx over dt. Again, you can get the change in position is equal to from time initial to time final, the velocity as a function of time. Good. John, what is Newton's second law? Uh, some of the forces equal mass and acceleration with vectors on force and acceleration. Great. So if you recall, this is where we started with Newton's second law. Um, whenever you're using Newton's second law, please remember to draw, always draw a free body diagram. Whenever you're dealing with forces, it's always a good idea to draw a free body diagram. We, of course, then had the more, um, the more correct version of Newton's second law, because that's the Newton's second law from last year. What is the Newton's second law from this year? Sarah Jane. Hillary, help her, help her out. Remember, it's the net force equals the derivative of momentum as a function of time. The difference here is this is the derivative of mass times velocity with respect to time, or the derivative of mass with respect to time times velocity, plus uh, mass times the derivative of velocity with respect to time. In other words, what was the assumption made for the equation last year? Basil. Mass was constant. Made the assumption that was mass, mass was constant. If you look at this equation, if mass is constant, dm dt goes to zero, this whole piece would go to zero and it'd just be mass times acceleration. Uh, J is the symbol for what? Um, Eric? Stacy. Impulse. Impulse. The other equipment symbol we have for impulse is what? Uh, Parallel? I. I. I point out both because, again, the, it's not consistent and you might see either one. The equation for impulse. Uh, Sierra? Uh, it's the change in momentum. 
It is equal to the change in momentum. Good. It is also equal to what, Tyler? Uh, isn't it like the integral of the force with respect to time? It is the integral of force with respect to time. Um, let's see. What else is equal to the integral of force, but with respect to something different, Emily? No work. Work, and with respect to what? Position. Work with respect to position. So notice the similarities, again, between these two. Work is equal to the integral of force with respect to position, and impulse is equal to, uh, sorry, work is equal to the integral of force with respect to position, whereas impulse is equal to the integral of force with respect to time. Um, conservation of linear momentum. When do we know linear momentum is conserved, Jenkins? Is it an elastic collision? Uh, I'm talking more about pro proving it. True, it is during uh, all collisions and explosions, but we, in this class we need to be able to prove it. When is momentum conserved? Zero. When the net force which is equal to the derivative of momentum as a function of time is equal to zero, this means that the momentum is not changing and therefore momentum is conserved. Oh, good. We've done that. Ah, I guess we didn't really specify that one. Uh, momentum, we never quite wrote that down, but momentum equals mass times velocity. Uh, free fall, somehow we missed projectile motion. Remember in projectile motion, you split things up into the x direction and the y direction. In projectile motion, what do you know is always true about the y direction, Bill? Uh, a, well, a is uh, negative 9.8 uh, nine meters per second squared, or 9.8 meters per second squared down. Good. This means in the y direction, we can use UAM. What is true in the x direction? Uh, there's no acceleration. There's no acceleration. In other words, the velocity in the x direction is constant. It's equal to delta x over delta t. What is the one of the UAM variables, the only one of the UAM variables that is a scalar? Is that? Um, time. time. So notice that time is independent in, of direction. And generally, what you're trying to do with this is figure out the time in one of the two directions and apply it to the other one. Don't forget about i, j, and k unit vectors. It was here with projectile motion that we introduced i, j, and k, the unit vectors. Uh, the force of friction. We have two different kinds of friction. They are what? Miller. Static and kinetic. Static and kinetic friction. So the general equation is that the force of friction equals mu times the force of normal. What are the dimensions on mu, Hamza? There are no dimensions on mu, it is a coefficient. <laughs> Therefore, we can get from here that the force of kinetic friction is equal to mu uh, k times force normal, but for the force of static friction, it's less than or equal to mu s times force normal. Why is it that the force of static friction is less than or equal to mu s times force normal? Doorstep. Close. I, I agree with that, but I need a little bit more. Who can give me a little bit more description of that? John? Because um, if it was equal to, then if you had like a smaller force pushing on it, then it would go down. If I take this object and I apply a small force on it this way, if the force of static friction were simply equal to the force uh, uh, mu k times force normal rather than less than or equal to, the book would suddenly start to move toward me. But what the force of static friction does, if you recall, is it simply adjusts to make sure to keep the object from moving. So if I push a little bit harder, the force of static friction increases. If I push a little bit harder, the force of static friction increases, simply to keep the object from moving. Um, let's see. Oh, three things I have to remember about the direction of the force of static friction. Loki. Oh, it's always opposite the force, or the velocity. It always opposes motion, but you have to be careful we don't say opposite the velocity because for static friction it's actually not moving. So it opposes motion. I got two more. Miller? Uh, Parallel to the surface. Last one, Jenkins. Independent of the force applied. Independent of the direction of the force applied. Good. Uh, we've done work. Oh, um, 